We have, did we have ice cream? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown and joining me today is John and Griffiths and you're listening to the Sort of Interesting Show. This is the first real episode of the podcast so I'll give you a quick introduction. Basically we're just going to have a few good conversations about what we've been up to that won't fit in written words on the website good old sortofinteresting.com. Go there now! So then, what have we been up to recently then, my dear friend Johnny? Well, recently we have done a lot of geocaching. Now, for anybody out there who doesn't know, what on earth is geocaching? Well, geocaching is kind of like a high-tech treasure hunt, really. But we managed to do it without the high-tech bit. But we'll get into that later. (laughs) Yeah. If you look on a website such as geocaching.com, rather aptly named, you can find a list of... uh, incredible amount like millions around the world of small little treasure troves people have hidden around the place and you get your gps coordinates or look on the map and see whereabouts it is maybe get a cryptic clue and then off you set out into the wild world searching for the cache let's say that you've set out on this great quest and you find your little geocache could be a big tub filled with goodies or it could be a tiny little speck that nobody would ever see without looking so what do you do when you find it well once you found it you'd you'd sign the log which is like it's mostly a little scroll of paper sometimes there'll be a pen or a pencil in the cache but always make sure you've got one with you because some of them are small so small you can only just fit in the palm of your hand (laughs) yeah so you'd sign the log and if there's something in there you can usually take something and leave something but always trade up we had a particularly good geocaching session last week where we headed out to a local town that goes by the name of Ellesmere and we managed to find 12 caches in an incredibly epic 8 hour 10 mile trip. Uh, a few more miles were added in the endless searching for some tricky caches. <laughs> Walking back and forth through that tunnel. <laughs> what is an actual geocache when you find it? Well, some of them are literally just butty box style tubs filled with all sorts of things. Some of them are a little bit more, well, I'll say outright ingenious. And Jono, there was one that you managed to discover by complete accident. Yeah, by sheer ignorance alone. It was uh, the snail, believe it or not. We'd, we'd, been, we'd spent ages looking for this one geocache and right at the end of the thought, right, we're going to give up. But I happened to see a snail stuck to, uh, stuck to the bottom side of this bridge and... Right, we were, about to, we were about to leave and I said, right, the only other place I can think is it's a snail. <laughs> and funnily enough, this was snail wasn't actually a snail. It was a small cache with a magnet in. Uh, I don't know if someone would have made or bought, but it was ingenious. Uh, so, so this is the fascinating world of geocaching. Now, I hadn't heard of this until somebody was mentioning it on Facebook. But when I started and first discovered all these little tubs hidden around the place... The last thing I imagined was that for literally years, I'd been walking past countless caches, possibly a thousand times in a year, and never knew it was there. And then when you come to something like this snail, where it is literally a perfect snail shell, real or replica, I don't know, that's got a scroll of paper hidden inside it, well, you would just never imagine it for a second. And just around the corner from the snail, we were walking down the towpath of this canal, there's a random winch for one of the old locks. And amazingly, the same person who'd done the snail has taken a good old thick bolt, hollowed it out, cut the top off the bolt, screwed the bolt into its own top, and in the hollowed out section, put a scroll of paper for you to write your name on and hidden it as a geocache. Now, that is just mind-blowing. And yet... Probably hundreds, maybe thousands of people will walk past that in any given period of time and never know it was there. And even if they saw it, it would be, well, look at that, there's an old bolt. <laughs> the hours of labour that's gone into making that cash alone is phenomenal. It's Someone's really gone to a lot of effort to place out there. So who does place these geocaches? Well, literally anybody. I mean, me and Jono here have got... A few ideas lined up for our own to place. Maybe not quite so specialist as the ones we've just mentioned, but still, anybody can place them. All you have to do is log them on the website and everything's good to go. And who knows, 
perhaps next time you see it, 100 people have been there. Ideally, you would go to geocaching.com and get coordinates that you can put into your GPS device and you will. this will guide you directly to the cache within a, about a few feet, would you say? Well, I would imagine so. Sounds pretty accurate to me. But we manage without through logic and... <laughs> well, here's the, here's the bizarre part that takes our version of geocaching to some sort of old 1700s pirate quest, where because we don't have a GPS device between us, I've had to resort to taking screenshots and either printing them out or sticking them on my iPod so we can have a look. But more pirate-like, I have to hand-draw maps listing the number and location of these different geocaches <laughs> and then write down all the clues, which could be incredibly cryptic that you've no idea what it actually means, even when you get there, such as the snail one, where the clue was asleep. Hence, the snail is asleep, I assume. <laughs> um... So yes, we generally, as a, as a rule, head out geocaching with a few sheets of paper, hand-drawn by my fair hand, which, well, let's just say drawing is not my strong point, directions aren't one of my strong points, and neither's general accuracy. <laughs> so that's why a trip can take eight hours for 12 caches, so please don't let that put you off. Well, we did walk a fair distance in that eight hours, about 10 miles in the end. Uh, yeah. So the only thing I can really recommend otherwise is a decent set of boots, because you're usually in the, usually in, in the undergrowth. Oh, goodness gracious. Because yeah. these could be hidden anywhere from the base of a tree, under a rock, and some of the more ingenious ones we found was like in a wall, yeah. in, in a scaffolding tube, uh, and there was a really tiny one on top of a, like a signpost by the cornfield we, we went to. And it was painted the same colour as this post, this signpost. And the actual cache itself was no bigger than your thumbnail. And I think we kind of found that by accident as well. Didn't oh, we? definitely. It literally looked like a cap of a screw in the signpost. It was unbelievable. And once again, like I say, probably thousands of people will walk past that in a year, look straight at it, and never know it's there. It is the secret world around us, as I posted on the site. <laughs> One of the things that I do love about geocaching is, like we mentioned, the cornfield. It was um, this incredible field with corn, well, it's probably maize, judging from how high it was. I'd say a good few feet above our head height. And geocaching has taken us through this crazy field where we're literally like something out of Jurassic Park and dreading the velociraptors or goodness knows what, <laughs> picking off the stragglers at the back of the group. And it's just the whole thing of, I've done a lot of walking all over town, and yet somebody else has placed these geocaches on one of their routes. And it's taken us to a completely new area with all sorts of new bits and pieces to see. And there's like a nice little stream down one side of the town that never really think of going. And yet yeah, all along there's this geocache being hidden there, which theoretically you would get your shoes and socks off and head out into the water. But I managed to do some rather daring tree climbing to get to it. <laughs> well, um, being watched by... Some very perplexed builders, we'll say. Oh, that was such a funny day. Oh, my goodness they me. must have thought we were crazy rooting in that tree over the water. Uh, with all their equipment was trying to pump out the river that we were, <laughs> <laughs> that we were playing in. But what on earth they must have thought when we just turned up, started climbing in a tree, found a secret package, looked at it for a bit, and then put it back and walked off. Goodness knows, Well. Who knows, the police could have turned up there five minutes later. And then, we, then we had to walk past them again because we went the wrong direction. Oh, good grief. And they looked in our <laughs> eyes and judged us. <laughs> but as a, as a general rule of thumb, nine times out of ten, you'll find that these geocaches are, are not on private property. They're usually in a public place, public footpath, so you shouldn't have to go trespassing anywhere anyway. Yes, and if you do, we certainly didn't advise it. <laughs> There's the disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> In these larger caches, there can be all sorts of bits and pieces like toy soldiers, little key rings, all sorts of things in general. But there are some fascinating items. For example, Jono, what did we find that is absolutely mind-boggling? Well, we found our first geocoin. A geocoin is basically just a small coin-shaped and sized object that has a little tracking number so you can log it on a website. So somebody will place it in a cache and then somebody else, somebody else finds it, then they log it on the website and move it to another one, and then someone does it again. So you can track the crazy journey that these coins have been on. So, Jono, 
where has ours been? And how far do you reckon it's been about, judging from the website? Well, our coin has a total of 52 logs altogether. I think so, something around that. You know, it's travelled 4,000 miles in total. Well, yeah. about 4,000 miles. And it ended up in North Wales via Sweden, Greece, somewhere near Preston, and then back to North Wales where we found it last week. Yes, and it's got to be said, to randomly find a little coin in a box in the woods that's travelled probably further afield than I ever will is quite something. And then the fact that you can just go to a website and see where it's been dotted all over the globe. I mean, some of these coins that I've had a look on the website at have been literally thousands upon thousands of miles. They've been everywhere. They have been living the absolute rock star lifestyle. <laughs> So, in summary, geocaching is quite fun. It gets you out of the house. It's good exercise because we generally end up walking at least four or five miles every time we go. Oh, goodness me, easy. So, it's relatively cost free as well. Always a plus. You can do it without a GPS. Like one will make it easier, but we seem to do all right. Yeah, well, can't really complain. We've had, I think I've got about 46 caches logged so far. I mean, from a paper map. That's that's pretty good going. I think we've only failed to find three or four, haven't we? Yeah, so it's not too bad at all. So there's something to consider giving a go. Like Johnny says, it's good exercise, nice and cheap. Why not? Have a look at geocaching.com. But as well, while you're on that internet browser, make sure you check out good old Dan and Jono's site, <laughs> sortofinteresting.com. You'll find all sorts of random bits and pieces there, geocaching biking, learn to play the tin whistle. It's just a general site full of sort of interesting things. So hope you'll check that out. Um, if you so wish, you can like us on Facebook, just search for Sort of Interesting. And if you so wish, which I hope that you will, you can also follow me on Twitter. Uh, just search for sort underscore of underscore Dan. So that's sort of Dan. And Jono, I believe you're on Twitter. Yeah, it's Jono underscore Griffiths one. Excellent. So let us know, leave reviews and comments and just generally give us some good fun and feedback. And we hope to see you online soon. But right now, I believe that we've got um, some geocaching to do. Yeah. Excellent stuff. So over and out. Goodbye for now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> At least have the high five in. <laughs> wow. Like pros. <laughs>